Okay, so just looking at some inequalities that um, basically they have like more than one absolute value in it. So a little bit trickier. <clears throat> so if you look at this here, you see this models the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B equals C. Now when you're looking at something like that, basically what's in the absolute value could be plus or minus. So you could have plus A and plus could go with plus B. So that would be C. You could also make that minus A and that could go with minus B. That's another possibility. <coughs> You could then do plus A with minus B, because what's inside A could be plus or minus. What's inside B could be plus or minus. And then minus A with plus B. So there's four different possibilities that you actually need to consider. Okay. Now, these could also turn out to be an inequality. So the first step is just to solve using these four different possibilities. So solve using um, the four different possibilities. And then once you've done that, you need to look for your key solutions, put it on a number line, and then test the point. Okay. So <clears throat> you're basically doing the different combinations of plus or minus A plus or minus B equals C. Then once you've solved, you're solving for X. Let's just say you end up with x is alpha and x is beta. You put on a number line. Now, when you put that on a number line, so you have your alpha and your beta, an open circle or closed circle, depending on whether it's a solution. And if it's equal to and you found a solution at that point, it will be a coloured in circle. Then all you need to do is you need to test a point to see if it's true. That would be your third step. So when you're testing a point, like just say zero was in between here. If it wasn't, like you could test any point, like it just say that was one. So if we put in x equals zero, you put it into here. Zero plus two equals five. The absolute value of minus three is three. The absolute value of two is two. And see that works. So that means in here will work, okay? So you test a point. <coughs> And then what you do is you just write the solution. So the solution to these could actually be an inequality. If it doesn't work in between the points when you solve it, well, then obviously you don't write them. But if it works, then you either write them using interval notation or using the inequality. So we're going to focus on the one that we have up here. So x minus 3, x plus 2. So let's go through and look at all the possibilities. So you go plus x minus 3 plus x plus 2 equals 5. That'll be 2x minus 3 plus 2 is minus 1 equals 5. 2x equals 6. x equals 3. So that's one solution. Okay, so now let's keep going with that. Let's go minus... Um, sorry. Let's go minus x minus 3 minus x plus 2 equals 5. So that's minus x plus 3 minus x minus 2 equals 5. Minus x plus 3 minus 2 is plus 1 equals 5. Minus x equals 4. And then that means that if minus x equals 4, then x is equal to minus 4. And that will be your, your solution. Okay, so that x equals 3 and x equals minus 4. Now, you notice that if I did plus a, so plus x minus 3 and minus x plus 2, what happens here is you get plus x minus 3 minus x minus 2 equals 5. The x's go out and there is no solution. So if you went minus x minus 3 plus x plus 2, that equals 5. The x's will go out because it's minus x plus x. So there'll be no solution. So out of this, we've really only got these two solutions. What we then need to do is to place them on a number line. So you go minus 4 and 3. 
So it's equal to minus 4, it equals to 3. So now I just have to test if it's equal to anywhere else. So 0 is always the easiest one to calculate. So if you put 0 in, we go the absolute value of 0 minus 3 plus the absolute value of 0 plus 2 equals 5. The absolute value of minus 3 is 3. The absolute value of 2 is 2 equals 5. So 5 equals 5, and yet that is true. So what that's actually telling me is in between minus 4 and 3, the solution is um, true. So it means that x will be in between 3 and minus 4. Okay, And we could also write it as minus 4, 3 as our solution. Make sure that you can see it. Okay. And that would be the solution either of those. So just through the steps, what was the first step? You need to do it plus or minus. So you're doing like um, plus, plus A plus B equals C, minus A minus B equals C, minus A plus B equals C, plus A minus B equals C. Once you've got your solutions, in some cases it's two, maybe it might be more solutions, you put it on a number line and you put, you have to test a point. So you put it into the original equation to see whether it's true. And then the last step is to write your solution. So that's what we did here. We did plus plus, minus minus, and then plus minus, minus plus. And these ones were no solution. And these ones had two solutions. I put the two solutions on a number line. And then once we did that, we tested whether it was true or not by putting zero into the original equation, which was this. And then you just put zero in and you'll see that that is actually true. So that would be your solution. Okay, so this is just the 2013 HSC question. So looking at this here, you look at this equation here and we're just asked which inequality has the same solution. Now, if you look at this, this is the, um, we do the plus minus thing. So we go, all right, plus x plus two, plus x minus three equals five. So that means 2x minus 1, because plus 2 minus 3 is minus 1 equals 5. Plus 1 plus 1, 2x equals 6. So then if you divide by 2, you end up with x equals 3. That's <coughs> one solution. Oops. Okay, so um, now let's look at the other, other options. So you've got minus x plus 2. Minus x minus 3 equals 5. So minus x minus 2. Minus x plus 3 equals 5. So minus 2x plus 1 equals 5. Minus 2x equals 4. Over minus 2. So x is minus 2. So that's your other really important point. Now if you look at this and you go for the next um, options. You've got plus x. You have plus x plus 2 minus x minus 3 equals 5. The two x's will cancel out because you get x plus 2 minus x plus 3 equals 5. The x's go out. That's no solution. Then you could go minus x plus 2 and then plus x minus 3 equals 5. And once again, these x's, so there is no solution. So the next thing that you need to do is then you test it on a number line. So you've got minus, what was this one? Minus 2. So x equals minus 2. And x equals 3. <clears throat> minus 2 and 3. Okay, so they'll be coloured in. Now if you just put x equals 0 into there, let's just test it out. 0 plus 2 plus 0 minus 3, does that equal 5? So you get 2 plus the absolute value of minus 3 equals 5. 2 plus 3 equals 5. So yes, it does. So the solution will be in there. So the solution is in between 3 and minus 2. 
So the actual solution to this is um, minus 2, oh sorry, in between, that's minus 2, in between minus 2 and 3. So the question is which one will have the same solution? So you just got to look at the other ones. Now that's equal to minus 2 and 3. If you look at the first one straight away, we know that 3 minus x cannot equal 0. So x cannot equal 3. So that one's out because x is 3 in this solution. We look at this one, x can also not equal 3. Um, if we look at that one there, that's the inequality factorised. So you get x minus 3, x plus 2, less than or equal to 0. x equals 3 and minus 2 is the solution. So you go minus 2, 3. If you put in 0 into there, you get x equals 0 minus 3, 0 plus 2 minus 6, that is less than or equal to 0, so it's true. So this one actually does have the same solution. So the answer to this multiple choice would be C. Okay, I'll just have a quick look at that. All right, let's look at the next one. <clears throat> okay, it's an inequality. So make that an equal sign. Solve it by times in both sides by x minus 3. 3 equals 3, x minus 3. We also know here x cannot equal 3. That's something that's really important because it's on the denominator. If you cancel the 3 out, you get that. So x minus 3 equals 1, x minus 3 equals minus 1, x equals 4, x equals um, minus 1 plus 3, which is 2. So if you put that as 2 and 4, it will be an open circle because that's not equal to there. Now let's just put in um, x. Now we don't want to put x as 3 because we know x as 3 is not a solution. But let's put something outside it. So let's put x as 0. So 3 over the absolute value of 0 minus 3 is less than. Now what is that number there again? It has to be less than 3. So that's 3 on minus 3. That will give you 3. Absolute value minus 3 is 3. So that would be 1 is less than 3. That is actually true. So that means it's going to be here and here. So x is less than 2 and x is greater than 4. Okay, if you did the interval notation, it would be minus infinity to 2 and it would be 4 to infinity as your solution. Because it's both of those two, you could, put a, you could also write that with the symbol of a union, if you wanted to. Okay, um, so 